Good afternoon, you guys. This is Amber with Amber Poetry and Song. I'm coming to share a prophetic word with you. Um, this prophetic word I received on June 7th, 2022 at 319. What I saw was two big rocks and a path between those rocks. I looked up 319 and it meant to be made known, to recognize, and then the place that I was led to the first place was Acts chapter 7, verse 13 through 36. So I'm going to get into that and start reading from verse 13. Actually, I'm going to start at um, 9. It says, this is about the defense of, of Stephen. When Stephen was reminding them of the high, high priest of just the different things that their forefathers, you know, went through. He was basically preaching to them. Okay, so I'm going to start at verse 9. It says, And the patriarchs moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt. But God was with him and delivered him out of all his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Now there came a dearth over all the land of Egypt and Canaan, and great affliction in our fathers found no sustenance. But when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first. And at the second time, Joseph was made known to his brethren, and Joseph's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh. Then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him, and all his kindred threescore and fifteen souls. So Jacob went down into Egypt and died, he and our fathers, and were carried over to Sichem and laid in the sepulcher that Abraham brought for a sum of money of the sons of Emor, the father of Sichem. But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt till another king arose, which knew not Joseph. So I'm going to pause there. Um, so far with what I've read, this is just Stephen reminding them of these things. But what the Lord is saying with this vision is that his chosen ones are being made known. Um, his Those who are, you know, walking on the narrow and cramped road, truly walking with the Lord, his chosen ones, these people are being revealed in this hour. Those who are part of his remnant, his chosen. These people are being revealed. They're being made known um, and these people are deliverers. Um, many of them are deliverers. So I want to say that I'm going to keep reading verse um, 18 says, till another king arose, which knew not Joseph, the same dealt subtly with our kindred and evil and treated our fathers so that they cast out their young children to the end. They might not live in which time Moses was born and was exceeding fair and nourished up to his father's house three months and when he was cast out pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son and moses was learned in all the wisdom of e of the egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds and when he was full 40 years old it came into his heart to visit his brethren the children of israel and seeing one of them suffer wrong he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the egyptian for he supposed his brethren would have understood how that god by his hand would deliver them but they understood not. And the next day he showed himself unto them as they strove and would have set them at one again, saying, Sirs, ye are brethren. Why do you wrong one to another? But he that did his neighbor wrong thrust him away, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge over us? Would thou kill me as thou didst the Egyptian yesterday? Then fled Moses at this saying and was a stranger in the land of Midian, where he begot two sons. And when 40 years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire and a bush. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight. And as he drew near to behold it, the voice of the Lord came unto him saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled and durst not behold. Then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where thou stand is holy ground. I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people, which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groaning, and am come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send thee into Egypt. This Moses, whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler. 
and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush he brought them out after that he had shown wonders and signs in the land of egypt and in the red sea and in the wilderness 40 years and so i'm gonna stop there um I'm going to stop there. Like I said, the Lord is, is, is revealing and is making known, causing his chosen to be recognized for people to see who his chosen are. And these people are people who have been rejected from the beginning. These people are like the Josephs or like the Moseses. Um, they've been betrayed, you know, rejected by their own family. Sometimes their own people, um, they have been in wilderness seasons to where they've been stripped of everything. They've lost, you know, everything. They've been pruned um, and prepared. And in these wilderness seasons, they have also have been shown how to fight, how to um, take on spiritual warfare, how to be deliverers, how to deliver themselves from the things that were plaguing them, from the strongholds that were plaguing them. Um, they've been delivered and they've been changed they've been transformed and they re they've been renewed um in the spirit of their minds they're not who they were when they first were thrown into you know you know these these wilderness seasons or where they like joseph were betrayed and sold into slavery by their own families these people have endured trying times and they've been tried and they've been put through the fire they've been tested and in this hour the lord is revealing his children. The Bible says that um, many are called, but few are chosen. Many people are called. Many people are called. There are people who believe in God, and there are people who actually truly lay down their lives for Christ and walk with the Lord. These chosen are those who have laid down their lives. They've been through things. They've, they've, um, they've laid down their lives for the Lord. They've had to endure they've been afflicted. The, the, the things that they are receiving have not come easy. They have come with affliction, with persecutions. These are the people that the Lord is making known and, and causing to be recognized. These are his chosen. These are the people that are part of his remnant. He's re revealing these people in this hour, those who have walked the narrow and the cramped road um, that could lead and show others that same way because they have been put on the line first to do so and it's to reach back and show others you know that are still lost um that are on the broad path you know that's leading to destruction to show them the way in which they should be walking and so um also this this passage that i've read is about Stephen. So Stephen was sharing this with the high priest and we know towards the end of this, they didn't like what he was, what he said. And so they stoned Stephen and they killed him. Um, verse, verse, fifty four says, when they heard these things, they were cut to heart and they gnashed on him um, with their teeth meaning they didn't like the things that he was saying. So these chosen ones, because Stephen was another one who the Lord, you know, after he did all of this, he was making it known that this is the Lord's chosen. They didn't like what he was saying. So these chosen ones are people who, they're not gonna tickle your ears. They're not gonna say the things that you wanna hear. They're not gonna sugarcoat things. They're not gonna lie to you. They're gonna tell you the truth. They're gonna tell you what they need to, tell you to save your soul from eternal damnation. But in this hour, there's a lot of people who only want the sweet things, you know, told to them. They, they want their ears tickled. They want to be told, oh, only you're going to, you're going to receive this, you're going to receive that, but they don't want to know what the Lord requires of us, you know, how he requires us to, requires us to walk the ways he requires us to walk. Um, they don't want to know, you know, the things that show that you have to resist your own will and your own way for the Lord's will and his way. They don't, they don't want to know those things. 
that cause you to have to lay down your life for Christ. They don't want to know those things. And so it says 55, but he being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfast by looked up steadfastly into heaven. Stephen was full of the Holy Ghost, and they were coming against him, um, speaking against him, you know, opening their mouths against him and wanting to stone him. It says, and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, behold, I see the heavens open and the son of man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. So they ganged up on him. They didn't even care that he said that. That is how it, it will be for those who are the Lord's chosen. Those that that's how it would be for the, the for the not saying we'll be stoned, but that's how it how the persecution that you will have to endure when you really truly are tro uh, chosen by the Lord and you're truly walking with the Lord, with the Lord, you're gonna experience opposition, especially from those who profess godliness, but they're not truly actually walking in it. They've created their own righteousness from their own bellies and believe in what they you know, need to be righteous or, or what makes a person a Christian or someone who belongs to God. These are the same type of people that will persecute the Lord's truly chosen ones, the ones who he is walking with, the ones who have walked with him, the ones who've laid down their life for him. These are also people that are not afraid to speak up, to, to speak the truth. They worship God in spirit and in truth. They're not just tickling ears out here. They're going to tell you the good things and the bad things. God is balanced. They're not going to just be telling you good things. Making you think that everything in this Christian walk is all handy dandy. It's not. They are going to tell you the truth. They're going to speak the truth because out of love, because they care about your souls. But in the time that we're in, nobody likes to hear the truth. Nobody likes to acknowledge the truth. Um, and then when you are speaking truth, they try to mock you or make fun of you, you know, or they they boldly, you know, reject what you say and be proud and arrogant um, towards something you've 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 shared or shown. This is what those who are truly walking with the Lord will have to experience. And as you get closer closer to the end time, it's going to return to persecutions like like the Lord's disciples and his chosen ones in the Bible had to endure. You know, it's going to get back to that. Because this world hates Jesus, it, it hates Christ. The world does not like Christ like. And if they hated Christ, they're going to hate his true chosen ones, not the ones who pretend, the, the ones who play church, who who fake catches the Holy Ghost and all of this. No, the ones who are truly walking with the Lord. They will experience persecutions. People will not like them. People will not like the things that they have to say. People will be offended by the things they have to say. They will mistake what they're having to say as as it being hatred in their hearts or judge judgment that people are being judgmental when they are preaching the word they're preaching what the word is saying they are uh sharing what the lord what the lord has shared with them but they're rejecting it because they don't want to hear the truth these are the ones who are walking on the narrow path um and these are the Lord's chosen. And many of these have been called to be deliverers to help those who are not where, where they are yet to end up on the narrow path as well, to help deliver those who are still in the world, who are still walking on a path that's going to lead to destruction. And so it says um, in 58, and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. 59 says, and they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. So the next place I want to go to is um, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 13. And 
And I also want to say that as the Lord is revealing his, his chosen, um, making them known, you know, the Josephs, those are, that are like Moses's, those, you know, who have been called to be deliverers. He's revealing this and making it known in a time where even though everything seems okay right now, it's like we have breaks, breaks in the midst of things happening um, in the world. We've had the plagues. We're still having the plagues. We're constantly having increased um, times of sorrows, of, of things happening in this world that, um, that are hard to see, um, rumors of wars, things like that. Um, living in a time of recession, things like that. He's making these these chosen ones to be known in a time of chaos, in a time of famine, just like he did with Joseph back um, in the time where there was a famine in the land and they had to come to Egypt. He's making these children known. He's making his chosen known in a time of chaos, in a time of famine, in a time of war, in a time of sorrow. You're going to see who his real children are in, in these times. You're going to truly see who are the chosen ones of the Lord. And these will be deliverers. These will be people that will help others who need deliverance, who need, who are going to need help in these in times. They have been chosen to put on to be put on the front line to help save souls. Um, so Matthew chapter seven, verse thirteen. Says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which and many there be which go in thereat. So it says, Enter in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. So the way that leads to the destruction is wide. That gate is wide and, and the way is broad and many people are on that path and thinking that they are serving God truly when they are on the broad path. They're entering in in that wide gate. They're entering in in the wide gate and they're thinking that it's going to lead to eternal life, but it's actually going to lead to destruction. And many people Many false prophets are the cause of this, honestly. Many false prophets are the cause of people being led on in the broad way and into that wide gate. But it's not going to lead to eternal life. It says, and many there be which go in thereat. And so when you see everybody, a majority of people going in the same way, in the same direction, most of the time, many people many people want to follow that way. But just because you see everybody going in that direction does not mean that it's always right. Sometimes, the most of the time, the, the path that is right is the path that hardly anyone wants to walk on or, or the direction hardly anyone wants to go in. And that's how it is for the narrow and cramped road with God, with Christ, um, that the chosen ones are actually walking on. They've laid down their life for Christ. They have surrendered their will and their way to the Lord. They have been tried. They have been pruned. They've been purified. They've been, you know, baptized and with, with water. Um, and soon, Holy Ghost fire. They've been um, walking with the Lord. They've been trained. They've been equipped to handle whatever is thrown at them in this walk. They've been um, qualified. They've been qualified through Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And 14 says, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth into life and few there be that find it. So many people won't find the straight gate, that narrow way, that narrow path. Honestly, because a lot of people are not actually looking for it. You have to want 
and desire to know God, to know his ways, to learn of him, to learn of what he requires, what, what pleases him. You have to lay down, you have to sacrifice yourself, your wants and your needs for what Christ wants of you. You have to be willing to do that. And a lot of people are not willing. A lot of people are concerned with what is going on around them in this world. They're concerned with the cares of this world, with, with status in society. They're concerned with you know all the things that really don't matter. They don't have a heart for God. They don't have um, a heart that's after God. But his chosen do. His chosen have that heart that's after Christ. They're constantly um, examining their ways, trying to walk in his path, trying to, um, you know, stay repentant, keep a repentant heart and stay close to God. <clears throat> They're trying to stay close to him um, and they're trying to learn of his ways. They're trying to, you know, unlearn the things of this world to walk with God. And so the next place I'm going to go to is Jeremiah chapter 7. Because walking the narrow path and that crimp road is going to require you to denounce idolatry many times. Um, because idolatry is what keeps us from really truly surrendering to God. Whether it's through something you are personally idolizing to whether it's a false God that you're worshiping, um, known and unknown, um, knowingly and unknowingly, um, and whether that's through different things that you observe, practices, traditions that you observe. When you're walking the narrow and cramped road, you're fleeing idolatry. And so I was led to this place. I was led to Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 12 through 16. <laughs> verse 12, I mean, yeah, verse 12 says, <clears throat> verse 12 says, but go ye now into my place. This is about Judah's idolatry. So the tribe of Israel, Judah's idolatry, but it applies to now also when it comes to um, his chosen, because his chosen are walking that narrow and cramped road. They are leading, they are, they are leading the way to, to the path that others should take. The Lord has taken them through that path and now they're able to help deliver others so that they can walk that same path as well. Um, and so that path requires denouncing idolatry. So it says, but go ye now to my place, which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. And now, because you have done all these works, saith the Lord, and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but ye heard not, and I called you, but ye answered not. So Israel, the tribe of Judah, they were stiff-necked because the Lord was speaking, but they were not listening. They were speaking. I mean, he was speaking. He was calling to them, but they were not answering. It says 14, therefore will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein ye trust and into the place which I gave to you and to your fathers as I have done to Shiloh. 15, and I will cast you out of my sight as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. So it's sort of like today, 
okay? Because the Lord is speaking to two people and he's calling them. Many are called, but few are chosen. He's speaking, but many are not listening. They're mocking, they're making fun. They're not believing, you know, um, he's calling, but, but you're running. You're not answering the, the call that he's placed over you, the calling on your life, or to just come in, into fellowship with him, to walk with him. You're not answering. And so when you do that, you're choosing to walk into those wide gates, those wide gates, that broad path. You're refusing and rejecting the narrow path. And he said in verse 15, and I will cast you out of my sight as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. This is what he was telling the tribe of Judah. But this is also how the Lord is going to handle things in, in, in the last days. Those who are not walking that, that narrow road, that narrow path, he's going to cast you out. He's going to reject you because that path that you are on is leading to destruction. It's not going to lead to eternal life. And so those who are walking that narrow and cramped road, those will be the ones who would, will inherit the kingdom. But those who are not, those are the ones who, who will inherit the lake of fire. And that's at the second death. And so in order to not end up in that predicament, He's using his chosen. He's making known his chosen. Those he is truly using, who he is truly with, to help deliver souls so that they make it into the kingdom of God, so that they will inherit the kingdom, so that they don't inherit destruction. And a lot of this starts with denouncing idolatry. A lot of it starts with denouncing idolatry because once you're able to you know denounce certain things then you're able to give yourself completely over to god you're able to say okay lord have your way but when there's an idol in your heart or in your mind it's hard to do that it's hard to do it and so verse 16 says therefore pray not thou for this people neither lift up nor cry it says, therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. When you constantly refuse the Lord and reject him, this is, this is what will happen. He will reject you. It says, 17, seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood. And people do this to this day. It says the children gather wood and the fathers kindle the fire and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. I won't get too deep into certain things, but do your research of what it means to um, make cakes to the queen of heaven or what the queen of heaven has to do with. And what that is tied to, what tradition it is tied to. And you will begin to see the idolatry that's tied to this tradition. You will begin to see, you know, the things that people think God is smiling upon, that he's actually frowning upon. The things that people are calling good were actually evil to the Lord. You will begin to see these things. We perish for the lack of knowledge because we don't do our research. We don't look further into things. And so because of that, we perish. But when you humble yourself and you go and you seek out and search the Lord and you seek out, you know, to know and to learn things, then you're informed and your knowledge increases and you know what is required of you. Um, it says the children gather wood and the fathers kindle the fire and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings into other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. 
It says, do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? It says, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, my anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man and upon beasts and upon the trees of the field and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and shall not be quenched. This is symbolic of how the Lord feels about idolatry and where idolatry will get you in the end, because right now he's talking to Judah, but he's, he's the same God. So in the end, those that are giving themselves over to idolatry, to false gods, this is how he feels in the end. It is going to earn you a place in the lake of fire where the fire shall burn and it shall not be quenched. If you don't repent and if you don't re denounce idolatry, if you don't choose to come out of her, out of Babylon, um, out of falsehood, and to walk in the ways of the Lord, which is the narrow path that few are able to find, that few are willing to walk, you have to lay down your life for Christ. It's deep when it comes to that, laying down your life for Christ. And so 21 says, thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, put your burnt offerings into your sacrifices and eat flesh. It says, for I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. But this thing commanded I them saying, obey my voice and I will be your God. And you shall be my people and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart and went backward and not forward. So walk in the narrow path is obeying the voice of the Lord. By you walking the narrow path path and the cramped road, God is able to lead you and to guide you and to direct your path and be with you wherever you go until the end of the world. He's saying that he will be your God and he and you will be his people. He's saying walk in the ways that he has commanded because it will be well with you as you do this. As you walk the narrow, the narrow path, it's going to be well with you. You may go through some trials, some trying times, but that is to only prune you and purge you so that you produce more fruit in the Lord. Not to hurt you, not to harm you. The Lord chastises those that he loves. He is a father and we are his children. And so because he loves us, he's going to make sure that we are fit for the master's use. He's going to make sure that we are molded into that person that he's called us to be. He's going to make sure that we are washed with the water of his word. And sometimes you, that requires being put through, through the fire, being refined through a process that does not always feel good. It, it hurts sometimes. But in the end, it has its perfect work in you. It produces the fruit that is needed in order for God to use you. It says, um, 25, well, 24, when it says they hearken not, many are, aren't, aren't able to handle these things that I'm, that I was talking about. Um, they're not willing to take that path, that route, because it's, it's not easy. It says in the, in, in the Bible that many are the afflictions of the righteous, and that is the truth. Many people are not willing to go through those afflictions, but they are willing to walk in the counsels and the imagination of their own hearts, of their evil heart instead of what the Lord is saying. It says, and went backward and not forward. So they, the Lord was leading them. When he led them out of Egypt, he was taking them on the narrow path. 
This is symbolic of the narrow path. And the vision I saw, it reminded me of this because I saw two big rocks and a path between them. And I, I immediately thought of being led out of Egypt and Exodus. He's leading them on, on, that, on that narrow path. And when he did this, he then just automatic, automatically blessed them with the things they wanted. He led them from about Egypt, and he had them purge the things of Egypt from out of themselves. But a lot of them kept turning back to the things of Egypt, wanting to bring those things along, wanting to create gods for themselves. When he led them in, in into the wilderness, he was purging them. He was creating patience in them. He was pruning them. He was teaching him his teaching them his ways, showing them the way that he required them to walk before he was to bless them and give them of the promised land and of the promises to show them what he required of them so they can keep those blessings and to show ultimately that these people were a people of God, that they belonged to the most high God compared to all the other nations around them that were serving these false gods. <clears throat> That is the purpose of walking the narrow path in the cramped road. And he also was showing them, you know, how he would fight their battles as well. He was training them up in the wilderness, which is what he takes a lot of his servants through. Those who truly lay down their lives for him, he takes a lot of them through that. And he teaches them many things, just like he taught Israel when they were led out of Egypt. He teaches you many things through, through those wilderness experiences. He was delivering them, showing them how to be deliverers. Those that have been in, in the wilderness, showing them how to be deliverers. That is what walking the narrow path is about. And especially because once you begin to walk with Christ, in order to walk with Christ and to do greater works than he, you have to be taken through a process and know how to do those things. You have to be trained up and equipped for that. And so part of the wilderness experience is, is for that as well, because you're also, you know, once you've been baptized, you receive of the gift of the Holy Spirit and your gifts increase. You learn how to use your gifts. You learn what the, your gifts are. And your gifts are also enhanced the more you draw close and nigh to God. And the purpose of that is so that once he's taking you through that process is to go back and help others, to be deliverers, to heal, to help others, to deliver them so that they can come to Christ, so that their souls can receive of that salvation. So they don't end up in that lake of fire. That is the whole purpose. And so he's making known his children in this hour, those who have walked that path and still walk in it because we haven't arrived, but they are able to show forth the Lord's glory through their lives, through what God has taken them through, um, through what he's placed within them through the gifts he's bestowed upon them. These are those that are like the Josephs and like Moses, the Moseses and the deliverers. And so 25 says, since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt and to this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them yet they hearkened not unto me nor inclined their ear but hardened their neck they did worse than their fathers don't be like these people it says therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them but they will not hearken to thee thou shalt also call unto them but they will not answer thee but thou shalt say unto them this is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the lord their god nor receiveth correction truth is perished and is cut out from their mouth cut off thine hair o jerusalem and cast it away and take up a lamentation on high places for the lord have rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath for the children of judah have done evil in my sight saith the lord they have set their abominations in the house which is called by my name to pollute it 
It says, and they have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire. Research what that means, uh, burning your sons and your daughters in the fire, putting them through the fire, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my heart, because a lot of times just telling people what things are that's not going to do anything. You have to research these things on your own and see what the Lord, ask the Lord to lead you to it. What is he meaning by these things? And he will reveal them to you, the things that are evil that people still take part in today and what they're tied to that he hates, that, that he looks at as an abomination that are evil to him. 32 says, therefore, behold, the days come, says the Lord, that it shall not, that it shall no more be called Tophet. And, and also, thank you, Holy Spirit. Once you realize what these things are and the Lord shows you, if, if you know that you've been a part of these things, repent from them. Repent, turn away from it, and begin to walk fully and wholeheartedly with the Lord. It says that it shall no more be called Topet, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter, for they shall bury in Topet till there be no place, and the carcasses of this people shall be meat for the fowls of the heaven, and for the beasts of the earth, and none shall fray them away. Then will I cause to cease from the cities of Judah, and from the streets of Jerusalem, the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, for the land shall be desolate. So that was to Judah because of their idolatry. God is the same God. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. He still feels the same way when it comes to idolatry. That's why in the New Testament, Christ tells them, flee idolatry. He hates it in, in whatever form it comes in, whether it's idolizing another human being, whether it's idolizing something else over the Lord, whether it's idolizing him through false God, through pagan worship, through traditions of the world, all of it. The Lord is saying to flee it, denounce the idolatry, because if not, you see what happened with Judah in the last days, in the end time, this is how he feels about it when he comes back, when the Lord returns. And the first time the Lord destroyed the world with the flood. The second time, because he promised he would never do that again, it's going to be by fire. So when the Lord returns in the end times, in the last days, he's coming to destroy with fire the things, the works of evil. And idolatry is included in it. So let those who have an ear hear what the Lord is saying. Walk on the narrow path, the cramped road. Lay down your life for Christ. Resist your own will. You know, have the mindset of Lord, not my will, but your, but yours, but your will be done. Because as long as you are wrestling with God for your will and your way. You're on the fence and you're lukewarm and anything that's lukewarm, the, the Lord is going to spit out of his mouth. He doesn't want nobody lukewarm. He wants you on fire for him, on fire for Christ and leading others to, to do the same, to walk that narrow, um, that narrow path, not leading others to destruction. You know, the way that everybody else is seeming to take which seems right, but in the end, it leads to destruction. There's a scripture, I believe in Proverbs, that say there's a way to man that, that seems right, but it leads to destruction. That, that is applied to the, to the wide gates in that broad path. And so that is the end of this prophetic word. This is about his chosen ones being revealed. They're being made known to the world. He's making them to be recognized. Those who are chosen, those who have been called by him that have been equipped, that have been qualified through every trying process they've been through, through, you know, their experiences, their life, um, their wilderness, the things that the Lord has taken them through. They're being qualified. I mean, they have been qualified and he's being, and they're being made known. They're being revealed in order to help deliver others, to help deliver the Lord's lost children. 
that belong to him to help them to get on the that same road of walking that narrow path so that the end of that leads to life and not destruction. He's revealing these children, his chosen ones, his remnant, to show others how to worship the Lord, to walk in the ways of the Lord and to worship him in spirit and in truth. And so I pray that you're edified by this. Um, I pray that you've gotten something from this word and that you really sit and think on everything that's said in this video and that you take it to God. Anything that you don't agree with, that you that doesn't sit right with you, take it to God, ask him. Ask him to show you and he will show you. And so I hope y'all um, have a blessed day. Peace and goodbye. And I will be back soon with another word. Goodbye.